My favorite phone of the year isn't an iPhone. I know, I know. Most of the new growth in this channel has come from my coverage on Apple products, but the secret is that at heart, I'm an Android person that uses an iPhone. I think it's easy to say that the Pixel 7 Pro is my favorite Android phone of the year, but it really is my favorite phone of the year. And there are a few things that set it apart from my main phone, which of course is the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and that get me excited for the future of the Pixel line. Now let's start with the most tangible aspect of any device, and that's the design. I think Google really hit it out of the park with the redesign of the Pixel line, starting with the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. This Pixel 7 line is a refinement and evolution of the Pixel aesthetic. And now I have said in the past that curved displays feel dated to me and I prefer the flat industrial look and feel of any other phone out there. But Google has really decreased the curve radius on this year's Pixel and it's a welcome change. I honestly have never had any like accidental presses or color shifting with the Pixel lines, but this less aggressive curve gives you more to hold on to if that makes sense. It feels better in hand and that coupled with the you know, weight distribution of this phone is amazing. Like it feels like the most balanced top to bottom of any device that I've ever held. And it just makes me want to pick it up and use it more often than not. I also love the visor design because it looks different compared to every other phone out there that's just copying an Apple with the corner cluster cameras. This looks different. The refinement of materials, adding a seamless metal frame to the visor uh, is amazing as well. And it makes it enough of a change from the Pixel 6 to make the Pixel 7 feel new, if that makes sense. <laughs> Now I will say that the visor is pretty prone to scratches and that I've nicked it a couple times already. Considering that this is my secondary device and I don't put a ton of mileage on it, it makes me wonder how bad it would look if this were my primary phone. I have seen some pretty bad visors out there, uh, namely Ben from Lover of Tech. He did his Pixel 7 Pro review and that visor looks super dinged up. Uh, so. Hopefully in the next iteration, they have some type of brushed, more durable aluminum or something that resists scratches uh, for future models. And staying on the back of the phone, the other design choice that I wish Google would bring back is the textured frosted backs. Like I know they have, you know, recently reserved that for their base models and the pro lines of all these companies, pro is glossy and shiny, but I don't need my phone to be making a statement. I would rather it not be glossy. <laughs> The new premium fill, in my opinion, uh, is all matte, matte everything, matte design. I prefer the brushed aluminum, the frosted matte backs uh, of all the base models. In my opinion, the base model iPhone looks better uh, than the pro model because I don't like those rails on the pro. I don't I don't appreciate the shininess of everything. And I wish we would just get to matte and frosted, matte frosted, no fingerprints, sleek, discreet. I love it. <laughs> I would even prefer if they went back to the two-toned uh, gloss and matte backs to where they had like the window of it was glossy and the bottom was like either a matte metal finish or a matte frosted finish. The Pixel 1, 2, and 3 had that gloss window and that was the first wave of the identifiable trademark look of Pixels. And that coupled with the accent color button on the power button was amazing. That was peak Pixel design in my opinion. And I think Google will continue to refine this you know, design language I just hope that we get different materials in next year's version and that there are more callbacks to the OG Pixel brand and maybe even some of the Nexus phones out there. Uh, but yeah, I would love that. Now let's talk about this screen. Now being that this is the main attraction and it's the one aspect of the phone that gets 100% of your attention, it has to be more than good. It has to be great. Like I'm happy to report that the Pixel 7 Pro's display is amazing. From its 120 hertz refresh rate to its super fast touch sample rate, everything feels fluid and responsive. I gave this phone to someone that has never used uh, a Pixel product ever, and they currently use iPhone 13 Pro, uh, so they have promotion, uh, but they've never used the Pixel device. And the first thing they said to me is that it felt fast, like it felt super quick. The 6.7 OLED display has great viewing angles as well. Uh, it gets decently bright outdoors. It could be better. The Pixel 7 Pro screen uh, is currently ranked third globally on DxO Mark, uh, just under the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. And the spec sheet says that it can reach 1500 nits, but in real world use, I noticed that my iPhone 14 Pro Max is just more readable and brighter in direct sunlight. And the fact that this year's Pixel is much better than last year's when it comes to brightness and the overall screen is a good sign that the priority for Google is there and that it's, you know, ranked third globally. So 
where it lacks is in the brightness, but it makes up in color fidelity and quality. Now this is one area I don't wanna harp on too much, but it's one I can't really avoid. Let's talk about battery life. Now, like I said, this is my secondary device, so I'm able to supplement a lot of my usage and bounce back and forth between two phones, but I have attempted to daily this phone several times, and every time the phone quits before I do. Uh, you know, with the type of usage, you know, that I do, like social media, watching YouTube, gaming here and there, a decent amount, you know, throughout the day, I will have to charge this phone, you know, late afternoon without fail. Like, I have to recharge it before I go to bed. And if I want to get that late evening use out of it. And considering that this phone is packing a 5,000 milliamp battery, I'm surprised that it doesn't feel uh, like more. I'm surprised it's not enough. I, I don't think I'm that heavy of a user. I mean, I'm heavier than a lot of people, but I'm, I'm not glued to my phone like that. Now, I will give a small caveat to the Pixel and blame myself a bit because considering I don't use it full time, I may not be getting the full benefit of the adaptive battery software. Now, over time, the AI in this phone is supposed to adapt to how you use your device and extend battery life based on your usage habits and charging habits. Maybe it just hasn't figured me out yet. <laughs> you know, uh, I also may just be spoiled by the battery king that is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. But like I said, I don't want to harp on this topic too much because it's different from everyone out there. Like it depends on how you use your phone and, and how you charge your phone every day. So take that with a grain of salt. Now let's talk about the aspects of this phone that completely dominate and namely the camera. Now when it comes to still phone photography, the Pixel 7 Pro is up there and quite honestly better than the best out there in my opinion. This is also quite subjective because it comes down to your personal preference, but I prefer the Pixel approach to still photography. I like the look and mostly importantly, I like the added AI tools like Unblur, uh, the motion, the magic eraser, and all the AI features that have gotten you know better and better over the years, especially with the new Tensor G2 chip. Bottom line, I won't talk your ear off about it, but the Pixel offers the best well-rounded experience when it comes to still photography on any smartphone and the video isn't best in class but it's leaps and bounds better than what it has been even with the pixel 6 pro the cinematic video is not good <laughs> it's, it's just not good uh i feel like this feature probably should have the beta marker on it little beta tag on it because um, i feel like it's still in development um it's definitely not ready for prime time the motion it's just, it's just not there. I don't really don't even want to talk about it too long. This isn't a feature that I plan on using until it gets better, but it is a new feature and I feel like it will get refined over time. Now I'm most excited and impressed by what the Pixel camera system is and will be in the future versus any other camera phone out there. Now I would talk more about, you know, zoom, but I really don't use it to be honest with you. I'm not one to be zooming and pixel peeping a lot on my mobile you know, images. It's cool to have that extra reach when you need it, but I just rarely need it. You know, it's good to know that it's there and in the circumstances, you know, deem it necessary, I use it, but I just don't use it too often. You know, after experiencing and using the Pixel AI features and the camera, the voice recognition, the call features, it makes it difficult to go without them. And that is really what gets me excited for the future of the Pixel. So many phones are getting, you know, quote unquote, good for less, you know, the money and the specs, you know, they have kind of plateaued, but the AI is definitely the future when it comes to, you know, life changing features. Now, another thing that Google changed that is welcome, but not necessarily life changing is the new fingerprint reader with face unlock redundancy. Now, the fingerprint reader is still optical, which is inferior technology in my opinion, but it is faster than what we had before, especially with adding face unlock. It helps a lot when you're in good lighting. It's absolutely unusable when you're in like dim to no lighting, but it is really good when you're in good, in good light and you just scan your face real quick. So that way you don't have to worry about it, waiting for it to read your fingerprint. And I have to stress that the face unlock really only works when you're, when you have a lot of light. Uh, it's absolutely useless, like I said, in dim to no light because it's only using the front facing camera. Now I'm gonna say this until they actually bring it back. Please bring back Project Sully in some good way. I know Google had the best facial recognition out there, uh, even better than Face ID. And I have to wonder why they refuse to bring it back. And I can only assume that they don't wanna have the giant forehead that they had before, the giant notch. And maybe they haven't figured out how to put all that underneath the display. Um, but once they do and they bring back Project Sully, oh my God. It's gonna be amazing. The Pixel 7 Pro is my favorite phone of the year. And I have high hopes for what the Pixel 8 line will bring. It just feels like Google is just making like well worth it upgrades year after year after year. And if you're in the market for a new phone, you should definitely check out this product line, whether you, you know, you're trying to switch from Apple to Android or you're like a perennial Android user that you know truly wants to get the Android experience, you should check out the Pixel 7 Pro. Until next time, stay fresh, peace.